The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to reproach the cities in which most of his deeds of power had been done because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazan! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? No, you will be brought down to Hades. For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom than for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme of today's readings is repentance. It's one of the major themes throughout Scripture. Here we need to distinguish between repentance and remorse. Remorse means sorrow or regret for having done something. If we had the opportunity to do it again, we might do differently, but it stops there. Whereas repentance includes sorrow and remorse, but it adds the element of change. That act of the will, I will change my ways. I will turn back to the Lord. And that is true repentance, that interior conversion. Just notice the difference between Peter and Judas. Both sinned mortally when Jesus was going through his passion. Both had sorrow and regret. Certainly Judas was sorrowful. But it ended there. He tells his sins to the chief priest. In the scriptures it says... I have sinned and I have betrayed innocent blood. And then he even makes restoration. He brings back the money, the pieces of silver, and throws it into the temple. But he doesn't turn back to God. Peter, on the other hand, he sinned mortally as well, but he truly repented. And we see that in John's Gospel when Jesus asks him, Peter, do you love me? Three times. And Peter is forced to look inward and say, Yes, Lord, I love you. And he, in fact, would follow Jesus to his martyrdom, give his life for the sake of the Master. How do we make that change? How do we truly repent? An act of the will to make that turn. There's a famous scholastic saying, He who wills the end wills the means. In other words, if we truly want to repent, we will choose the means to do it. So, for example, if someone is caught in a particular habitual sin, they will come before the Lord and plan a course of action which will help them to turn from that habitual sin, perhaps not indulging in something that is a near occasion of sin. They don't go near where they know would lead them to sin, additional prayer that they pray every day, or they invoke the saints. A plan of action is what is called for here. He who wills the end wills the means. We see how vast this theme is throughout Scripture from beginning to end. The whole Bible is about repentance. The very first words Jesus said when he began his ministry is this. Repent, for the kingdom of God has come near. He's simply repeating all the prophets of the Old Testament. One of the most famous sayings in the Old Testament regarding repentance comes in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. God speaking, If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then I would hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Now we see an example of the danger of not repenting, turning back to the Lord in the first reading from Isaiah chapter 7, verses 1 to 9. We have this story of Ahaz, who's the king of Judah. He's being threatened. 
by two other kings because these two kings want Ahaz to side with them in a campaign against Assyria, but Ahaz refuses. And so now these two kings are about to attack him. In the first reading, we hear that the heart of Ahaz, when he learns about this threat, shook as trees of the forest shake before the wind. So what does God do? God has a plan. God sends the prophet Isaiah and says, go out and meet Ahaz and tell him, if you do not stand firm in faith, you will not stand at all. In other words, when we turn back to God and not worry about alliances with other people or things, but turn back to God, then we will receive this strength. We'll be on solid ground. We won't be shaking. And there's much to be nervous about and stressed over in the world. But when we have this foundation in Christ, then we will stand firm. We will not be afraid. And we will not fall into the repeated sin that makes us unpleasing to God. So let us have a plan, truly repent, and then stand firm in our lives. Because God is with us. He's with us in this Mass. He's going to be in us because of the Eucharist. We will have Christ strengthening us, nourishing us to take that firm stand for God. And then, have no fear. Let us pray.